welcome to Empowering. Thank you so much as usual for watching my videos. In this video, we're going to go over joints classification according to their function. Now this is the 13th video in this Anatomy 101 video series. So if you haven't seen the other videos, make sure you look above where you will find the link to the entire playlist. Also, if you like this video, please do me a huge favor and give the video a thumbs up. Also, post a comment and subscribe to the channel. It would really mean a lot to me if you did. All right guys, without any further ado, let's get right into the video. Joints. In case someone says your shoulder articulation is dislocated, don't panic. Articulation is more commonly referred to as joints. Joints are skeletal structures which function to join or articulate two different or more bones in the body. Additionally, they are important for mobility. There are approximately 400 joints in the human body. No worries though, since we only need to focus on a few which are some of the more common ones in terms of function and of course vulnerability. Since we have a lot of joints, it's only proper that we classify them according to either structure or their function. When we refer to the structure, the focus lies on the type of tissue that seals the connection. The tissue can be synovial fluid, a fibrous tissue, or the most common, cartilage. There are instances when the tissues involved are a combination of the three. As for the function, joints are classified according to the level of movement they allow the bones to make as well as the number of bones needed to make the movement. Note that these two, structure and function, are closely related to each other. So let's go over these. Types of joints according to function. Structural joints can be immovable, slightly movable, and lastly, freely movable. Immovable joints like the skull are connected by fibrous tissues. Slightly movable joints like the ones found in the spinal column are held together by cartilage, which are softer than fibrous tissues. The last one, the freely movable, are connected by the synovial fluid. An example of a freely movable joint is the shoulder joint or the knee joint. Types of joints according to structure. As mentioned, there are three types of joints according to structure or the kind of tissue that holds them together. These are fibrous. These are joints which surfaces are sealed by fibrous tissues. Given that they are fibrous, the connective tissues are hard and movements allowed for the bones become very limited, making the bones close to immovable. Two, cartilaginous, are the joints that connect via the softer cartilaginous tissue. Cartilaginous joints are interesting in such a way that some joints, called synchondrosis, turn into a full-pledged bone when adulthood comes. Symphysis is another type of a cartilaginous joint. The joints in this type are held together by fibrocartilages. And three, synovial. These joints allow the most movement for bones. There is a synovial membrane at the bone which produces synovial fluid, which will act as the lubricant to allow free movement. Amongst these three structural type of joints, the synovial articulation is further classified into several kinds. Gliding joints, such as those found on your fingers. These joints, as you can demonstrate, can make your fingers move in all directions. The fingers can only clench. Hinge joints, like those found in the elbows and knees, act like hinges of doors. These movements are also limited. It's either you bend or you straighten. Pivot joints. From the word itself, these joints allow you to pivot or swivel to a certain direction. Think of your head, which can swivel to the left or the right, or up and down, but only to a certain degree. Condyler joints. These are the joints that allow versatility in motion. With condyler joints, you can perform bending, stretching, abduction, adduction, and circumflexion. The perfect examples of these joints are your hands. Ball and socket joints. The only ball and socket joints we have in our body is the hip and the shoulder joints. These kind of synovial joints has a rounded bone that fits into a concave bone indentation. Saddle joint. These joints are like condyler joints, but they allow more movement. The only saddle joint in our body is found in the thumbs. As you can imagine, thumbs need to be more movable because they are used for fine motor skills.
All right guys, I really hope you liked that video. I hope you learned a ton. Make sure you stay tuned because in the next video, we're going to go over the most common joints in the body, like the shoulder joints, the hip joints, the knee joints, the elbow, and more. This video will be posted shortly. Also, if you are studying anatomy and physiology, make sure you become a member of my channel because I've uploaded my program, How to Study Anatomy and Physiology, there. In that program, I take you through specifically how to study for this class because there's a lot more that goes into it than just watching videos, obviously. You really need to know how to go through this massively huge book, how to strategically review PowerPoints, and how to get the most out of sessions with your professor. So I go through all of that in the program. This program's been around for several years, it's helped thousands of students, and I've made it super easy to get by just becoming a member of my channel. All right guys, I will see you in the next video, and I'll talk to you then, bye.